Now we have some understanding of the concept of demand. But to get a more complete idea of how demand works, let's have a look at what factors influence demand for a good or service. Let's look at a product that many of us consume on a regular basis. We'll try to identify what factors influence our decision to buy a quantity of that good. I look for a certain level of quality. Uh, to me, I would buy what I want to buy and not let money influence that. A brand of a good brand is obviously would be my choice, and uh, um, one would always go to go for the tend to go with the most popular brand. Taste. Uh, price doesn't bother me. If I want something specific and a certain brand or name, I'll rather buy it, even if it's double as much as a, the, the cheaper one. I definitely prefer something that tastes good and of good quality, uh, as opposed to the price, really. I'd rather spend a bit more. To a large degree, quality does count. It's taste and affordability. That's just it. Taste and affordability. Sometimes, sometimes, if I really, really want it, I'll pay that extra, depending on the brand. And sometimes, if I'm having a broke month, I'll take the cheapest one. Yes. Uh, no, it's definitely taste. I mean, oh, you know, uh, you have to consider the quality of the product for your own health and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I think definitely taste and quality, yeah. My taste influences what I buy completely. I don't buy anything that I don't like. I only buy things that I do like. I'll just ignore the rest. Price influences it sometimes when I don't have money, but I still won't buy things that I don't like. I will try and save until I get what I want. Definitely taste does influence what I buy too. From this, we can see that our tastes, our preferences, influence our decisions and our demand for any particular product. One day, we might decide this choice isn't very healthy, and that might change this preference, leading us to buy less fried chicken, but not today. This is also why businesses spend so much money on advertising. They want to influence our tastes and preferences. We will use the symbol T to denote tastes and preferences. Would you eat out more often if you could? Um, I would go probably once in a blue moon, once after two months, once after, once after a month or so. Yeah. Battle to cook myself, so I eat a lot of takeaways, trying to change that. Because people don't like spending a lot of money on food. It's too expensive. Just for a plate of food, it's like almost like a hundred rand. I, I can't afford to go out to enjoy myself, huh? Because the money is little. I mean, judging from the fact that, like, not more than two years ago, I used to pay nine rand ninety-eight for Streetwise One. Now it's like what sixteen rand. That's quite heavy for just two years. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's quite tough. It's quite rough. No, not at all. What does? Money, I earn yours too. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, once, uh, uh, once just to spoil myself. But I mean, you're working, uh, you earn, um, you get your salary today, tomorrow there's nothing. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's difficult now. It used to be okay before, but now uh, very difficult. Obviously, income is an important factor determining the quantity demanded, or QD, particularly for students. If they had more income, they'd probably buy more. The symbol Y is used to denote income. And what about prices? I would say that uh, prices affect the amount that would spend on purchases in general. Um, looking at the electricity, for example, with the price hike, I, I still need to buy electricity, obviously, but I'm, I'm definitely looking, I'm definitely buying fewer coupons as, as possible because I'm trying on my electricity consumption at home. And the same with, with energy prices like fuel. It's, I still need to spend a certain minimum amount of petrol on getting to work and back every, every day, but I'm definitely, when I'm going out you know, on a trip, I'm definitely staying closer to home rather than going out for a full weekend, say to the Karoo on a long trip or something. My favorite chocolate is definitely Lindt chocolates. But as we all know, it's a luxury brand that one can really afford when they're a student. So at the moment, Lint is having a special with dark chocolates where it's only 20 rand instead of 30 rand a slab. And um, I've definitely been buying, I've been stocking up on Lint chocolates since that special's been on. When Accessorize has a sale on their products, I go in there and I buy gifts for people's birthdays who are a few months in advance. Otherwise, I don't shop there because I find their prices a bit high. Price is obviously another important variable that influences their demand. 
We'll use the symbol PX to indicate the price, and later we're going to talk a lot more about the impact of price on the quantity demanded. Using these symbols, we can now say that the demand for fried chicken at any given time is a function of taste and preferences, T, the income of these prospective buyers, Y, and the price of fried chicken pieces, PX. There are other factors, however, that also affect the quantity demanded, such as the number of potential buyers willing to purchase. This is indicated by the symbol N. And then there's the price of related goods, indicated by PG. A special on hamburgers might be so good that you could eat them and have income left over for chicken tomorrow. Or there may be a special where you can get a free soda with pizzas at the place round the corner, so you buy that instead. And there are other factors too, such as the expected prices on a special offer starting tomorrow. Or maybe the service at some stores is better than others, and so on. All these other factors are represented by the three dots at the end of the equation. So there it is. The quantity demanded is a function of tastes and preferences, T, income, Y, the price of the good, PX, the number of potential buyers, N, the price of related goods, PG, and other factors, dot, dot, dot.